evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, tonight's talk on Tibetan medicine and color chakra. Uh, and, and in introduction, um, you all may know uh, we have 40 acres of land um, to build a spiritual paradise for all types of people to experience the life changing qualities of the color chakra path um, here in Victoria, Australia. And the land of Shambhala will give <clears throat> sentient beings an opportunity to find harmony with our external environment, uh, our internal and enlightened reality. So it's a space for people to authentically connect with the present world we're living in. Um, as part of Kentral Rinpoche's vision, uh, we will bring together the teachings of Kala Chakra, the sciences and various wisdom traditions in one place. Um, so a, part, a major part of the land of Shambhala vision uh, is the healing garden of medicinal herbs um, grown out of the inspiration to connect the people of Australia and the world with the color chakra through all of the Bodhisattva sciences, including color chakra and traditional medicine. Um, this We are very fortunate this week to have uh, Dr. Nida uh, talk with Kentral Rinpoche on traditional Tibetan medicine and color chakra medicine. Um, so, uh, to introduce Dr. Nida, um, Dr. Nida was born in a yurt in Amdo in Eastern Tibet, uh, interested in traditional healing and sciences of his people. Uh, he began his early studies at the local Sorig Hospital. Uh, later, he gained scholarship entry to Lhasa Tibetan Medical University, where mm -hmm. he completed his education in 1996. Uh, Dr. Nita also completed his practical training at the Surig hospitals in Lhasa and Loka. Alongside his medical education, Dr. Nita received complete Vajrayana Buddhist training in the Lokchen Nithing and Dutom Tsesa traditions and trained in the Yutok Nithing lineage, a spiritual counterpart to Surig with his teachers Kechen Troru Senam and Kempo Tsutrum Gyaltsen. He received the transmission with the empowerment to teach and further transmit the higher Griva Tantra and the youth thought anything from Kedrup uh, Michotsang. He has published many articles and books on Sorig. He has extensively researched ancient Tibetan healing methods and gained high acclaim in East and West uh, for his revival of the traditional Tibetan medicine, external healing therapies. Dr. Nita is the co-founder and medical director of Sky Sorig Kung International, former, formerly IATTM, International Academy of Traditional Tibetan Medicine. He's also the co-founder of the International Nyak Mang Institute, established to preserve and maintain the Mebkong Nyakpa yogic culture with modern Tibetan society. Dr. Nita trains students in Sor Rigpa, and the Yutok Nithing spiritual tradition in over 40 countries around the world. Living in Rome, Italy, he frequently returns to Tibet and stays informed of and assists with the advancement of Tibetan medicine. And to introduce Kentral Rinpoche, born in Ando Golok, region of Tibet, he studied and practiced in many monasteries of the four main Tibetan traditions. And finally, he found the Jonung tradition then the color chakra system of study and practice became his main focus. He meditated in many sacred places in Tibet and India for many years, uh, then making his way to the West in 2003, uh, where he started to learn the new language of English as well. He founded his first center in the West in 2005, uh, the Tibetan Buddhist Rime Institute in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, he's also the spiritual director of Zogton, a worldwide spiritual community um, with a second center established in Zogton Kalapa in Austria. He's authored many books available in approximately 14 languages, making the color chakra system of study and practice materials the most accessible to practitioners across the world. Now I will hand over to Kentral Rinpoche to start tonight's talk. <coughs> Oh, that's it, hello. Uh, everybody, uh, greetings. And uh, we are very honored that Dr. Nida uh, talking us today, medicine 
Uh, he's incredibly experienced and scholar and practitioner, so that's great. Uh, so uh, to introduce that, uh, um, I I interest the most uh, Kalachagra because uh, what I see is the Kalachagra is uh, the latest uh, tantra uh, and clears everything. Uh, other sutras, the tantra is not clear uh, and hidden meanings uh, revealed in Kalachagra. That's the one reason uh, very interest. Second interest because there is so many things, uh, even traditionally, is know and aware, but didn't emphasize uh, many things, such as the uh, Zogdan, the Golden Age. Uh, the world is going to be perfect world. Uh, this dance is very unique for Kalachagra. So that's why for me is very interested. So that's why it becomes my main uh, focus. So also the Kalachagra mm, system is uh, incredibly uh, like umbrella for the, all the spiritual traditions uh, in the world. Uh, for me it's like that, uh, include the science, you know, uh, there's atoms and all these things, um, cosmology, everything. Uh, the pr probably the nobody says anything clearer than Kalachagra, and uh, before the science. So Kalachagra talk about uh, external Kalachagra, internal, and enlightened. So the external is of course this uh, world, the cosmology and then astrology. And then the internal is uh, our body system and our mind system include that medicine uh, and everything. And then enlightened uh, is mandala. Uh, many different, three, three different mandalas, such as uh, um, uh, 1,600, uh, Deities, uh, Chuang Song Tenkur, 636 deities, and another uh, huge Galajara Mandala. All of them, uh, one way I look at is so many deities and so complex. Mm, uh, how you say, uh, the Mandala system. But uh, if we are uh, understood then is everything is our body system and mind system and how live healthy and spiritual and then if we follow that Kalachara is uh, incredibly like that the uh, the world is going to be perfect like that so today uh, yeah we feel very honored that uh, Dr. Nira is going to talk about medicine, which means I uh, myself is not that clear and uh, so much details. Uh, I didn't emphasize the details that. I just have uh, inspiration that to build land of Shambhala and medicine mandala because my my main master, this Galachagra master, he is a real like medicine and Buddha, and he healed uh, leprosy and so many things, uh, that's why. Uh, but today we have, um, you know, another medicine man, that's incredible, uh, Dr. Nida. So uh, I don't talk too much and please Dr. Nida, and thank you so much. And today you gave us some how to relate the Kalachagra and medicine and the astrology. Thank you so much. And then we make sure everybody have chance to questions. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.
Uh, thank you, Rinpoche, meeting you here again <laughs> after mm -hmm. we met for in the Vajrayana mm -hmm. conference in Bhutan. And so, yeah, thank you for Rimail Institute inviting me here to give a talk about Kala Chakra. And uh, yeah, as uh, Rinpoche said, actually, um, Kala Chakra Tantra, it's a very, very unique Tantra, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, some people for general public to, to easy way to understand the Kala Chakra Tantra is like the Tantra of the time machine. <laughs> the time machine which sends us from now to the past and to the future and so on. And um, so my personally also, I'm very much interested in Kala Chakra Tantra. As uh, Rinpoche mentioned, you know, when we study uh, uh, Tibetan medicine, so firstly, you know, Tibetan medicine or Soaripa, so firstly, we have to study about uh, um, the human body. And when we study about the human body, we have to learn how the human body, it's like where the human body is uh, originated and what are the basic ingredients of the human body and how about um, embryology the fetus development and then the birth and then uh, the growth and uh, you know so all the things and um, and then so once we learned about embryology then we study about anatomy and uh, so anatomical study it goes with uh, physiological studies you know and then from there, once we have a very good understanding about anatomy and the physiology, then we have a much better and clear understanding about uh, pathology or about the disease, right? So before we talk about disease, first of all, we have to know what is, uh, what is the wellness or what is the health. And uh, so that's why in Tibetan medicine, when we study, you know, medicine first, we study about uh, medical tantras which is called the four tantras the first one is the introductive or the foundation that's called the root tantra there are about six chapters and it is a very kind of extensive uh, introduction on tibetan medicine or so and uh, then secondly immediately we study about uh, human embryology so once we study about human embryology then in many um, in our medical text, you know, the quotations are coming from Kala Chakra Tantra. And so Kala Chakra Tantra actually gives a very clear explanation about the origin of human body and what are the, the main ingredients of our body and how the, the fetus is developing and so on. So that's why Rinpoche was talking about uh, the three aspects of Kala Chakra. So in Tibetan is uh, Chi Nang Zhen. So the outer Kala Chakra, the inner Kala Chakra, and other Kala Chakra, or, or, or the ultimate Kala Chakra. So it's divided in three parts. And then uh, the outer Kala Chakra is mainly is, is talking about uh, outer space, or you know, our space or the 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 dimension of the planetaries. So as we know, you know, Kala Chakra Tantra focus a lot about astronomy. So actually we can we can in a simple way we can say the outer Kala Chakra is about astronomy. So uh, and uh, why we use the time of Kala Chakra the, the word of the Kala Chakra the time because when we say time it's a question of number right it's a question of number. So that's why actually Kala Chakra is like a study of numbers. So you can call it the study of numerology or study of mat mathematic studies, right? Math. And so everything is about uh, calculation. So if we talk everything is about calculation and then through the uh, calculation in a mathematic way, we need we try to understand uh, what is the nature of the our outer space you know the the, the outer space in our solar system the different uh, the the planets 
and then even bigger let's talk about we can talk about the galaxy and then the universe and then infinite universe and so on right so the space starts from here in our living space to the outer space to the solar system and the, the planets and so on so to understand all the uh, the planetary system is everything is through numbers so through the calculations so that's called the outer kala chakra and uh, so that's why Actually, uh, I often say in the West, you know, many people are saying Kala Chakra is very new or very recent. But in the West, we have, for example, zodiac uh, uh, studies, you know, the 12 zodiac signs. And those uh, 12 zodiac signs are like a main topics in Kala Chakra Tantra, you know, when we especially we say the external Kala Chakra, right? And we know already 12 zodiac signs are, uh, you know, connected with us and these signs are um, affecting you know our life quality or our health we uh, you know we we maintain a good health because of our uh, good relationship or good combination with the planets and because maybe we are sick and we are having some health obstacles because there's the bad combinations of elements and planets and so on you know so that's why Actually, now we know in the modern medical science, we are talking a lot about uh, human health, uh, you know, human health's relationship with the uh, outer environment, right? Our living space really matters for our health. So we know that already. And uh, But in Kala Chakra Tantra, even talking, you know, far than that beyond of our just this living space and it's really in a very clear way to talking uh, how this our living space is connected with the different uh, uh, planetaries and uh, you know how we are receiving the influences right energetic influences and through the um, five or ten elements so in Kala Chakra sometimes we talk about eight or ten elements and so that's why, uh, how do you say, we, we can also, yeah, as I said, the Kala Chakra is very much about, uh, uh, you know, Buddhist tantric astronomy, right? So then the, the astronomical or astrological studies from India and developed into the Middle East, Arabic countries, and then coming to the West. So that's why I think, Many of those study, the zodiac sign study, astrology study, and the West is already already many of them they are mentioned in the Kala Chakra Tantra. So that's why Kala Chakra Tantra we can say also one of the first tantra, without carrying the name of tantra, you know, carrying the name of astrology and astronomy. So it's becoming kind of uh, how do you say universal uh, science or civilization for all humans. So that's what I want to say firstly. And then as a inner Kala Chakra, then it's talking about human body. And that part is that I mentioned about uh, embryology, anatomical part, and physiological functions. And this part in Kala Chakra Tantra, it's uh, very detailed and very precise, right? So for instance, when we studied about uh, uh, the formation of human body. So literally that refers to the yeah, embryology and anatomy and these things. We have received a very famous uh, uh, tantric uh, text, which is study about human body, the Vajra body. And that um, text is written by the third Karmapa. And the text is called uh, um, Sammo Nangdun, the, the, the profound meaning. And that's about uh, Vajra body study. So when we studied that from our master, Kambo Toru Tsenam, and then when he explained that this, this text to us, and he always told us, it's very important to study Kala Chakra Tantra because Kala Chakra Tantra actually give many very precise and detailed explanations, which we can't find, you know, those informations and in other kind of, Tantras, right? So therefore, we really studied uh, a lot about uh, Kala Chakra Tantra. And um, so through the human body. And then when we talk about the human body, so in the modern medicine, we talk about uh, 
anatomy and physiological functions, right? So this is the, the, the main topic. But then, of course, modern medical science don't talk about uh, chakras and channels, about energy and prana and this and that. <laughs> so sometimes, um, you know, the funny thing is like this. When you go to see a doctor, you know, not all doctors, but many doctors, and they say, oh, you have so many problems. You know, we did all analysis and we don't find what is your real, real problem. And then maybe they say, oh, that's, that can be considered, this problem can consider the psychosomatic problem. So it means in your mind, you believe in a problem and that problem is manifesting in your body, right? Your body is experiencing some symptoms because the obstacles are in your mind. And uh, then you say, okay, then if it's a psychosomatic uh, disease, what should I do? And then they will say, okay, then you have to just relax, you know, don't worry too much about your health and this and that, right? That's the, that's a very basic uh, uh, explanation from many doctors, more than, you know, MD doctors. And then if we say, okay, in the natural medicine with the, you know, they talk about uh, psychosomatic healing. They say, no, psychosomatic healing does not work, you know, actually mind cannot affect the body for healing it to heal the body right so actually this is a very kind of um, uh, you know very basic contradiction right so they are believing in psychosomatic disease but they refuse to believe or disbelieve in psychosomatic healing do you understand so that's something funny and so if psychosomatic, if mind can cause trouble for body, why mind cannot heal the body? It's the same question, right? It's the same question. So actually the Western, the word psychosomatic, it's a very precise expression. Psycho means the mind, soma means the body. So the mind, the mental obstacles are manifesting in the body and that's called the psychosomatic. So then mind can cause obstacles for the body Mind, why cannot rebalance it, right? Mind, why cannot heal it back? So that's why when we really talk about, it, I'm just saying to try to understand about our subtle body or the, you know, the, the, the subtle body or the subtle anatomical structure. And when we talk about chakras and channels or energy or prana, you know, in Chinese tradition is chi. When we try to understand these things, we really need to have a different way to think about our health, right? And also, for example, um, when we say like modern science, actually medical science says more than 60% of the disease, both mental and physical disease are stress-related disease, right? Stress is the root cause of, you know, so many kinds of disease right stress like we we know the stress can affect our blood pressure right stress can affect our uh, cardiovascular function and uh, stress can affect our brain function and stress can cause many neurodegenerative disease and stress can can affect the uh, cerebral uh, vascular disease is stress, stress can even cause metabolic problems, like including diabetic and so on, right? And of course, you know, stress can cause uh, many psychological problems, anxiety, uh, depression, and, uh, you know, panic attacks. And there are so many, you know, the mental issues are triggered by the stress, right? And then we try to understand what stress is. And then, Actually, in the modern medical science, they say, okay, the stress is the main problem. Yes, we know stress is the main problem. But why humans, we get stressed? Uh, stressed, And where actually, how the stress is, it's, it's working in our body. Why it's in our system? Why our head is messed up with the stress? Why once we get stressed, then our body is releasing stress hormones, right? This and that. So there are so many questions. And many of these things we really 
don't uh, understand clearly. Um, if we just uh, get stuck in the physical, anatomical, or physiological function, right? So then we really need to dive into the deeper level or deeper layer of ourself. And the deeper layer of ourself is our physical body is based on the channels and, and the chakras. And for example, Kala Chakra talks about, uh, you know, normally in Tibetan, uh, uh, Tibetan tantric system, like Kala uh, Chakra Samvara talks about four chakras. And then the Tibetan Book of Dead talks about uh, three chakras and sometimes mainly. And then uh, Tibetan medicine, we talk about six chakras and Kala Chakra talks about six, um, no, Tibetan medicine, we talk about five chakras because of five elements. Kala Chakra mainly talks about six chakras. But then if you go detailed, there's the bigger chakras and you know the major chakras, the minor chakras, then it can become even 12 chakras, right? So then when you really study how these 12 chakras, how they are connected with planetary energy, planetary system, how it's inter interacting, right? So actually external um, uh, Kala Chakra and internal Kala Chakra is the macrocosm and microcosm, right? Macrocosm is the, the, the outer space, the, the, the solar system, galaxy, infinite university, that is the macrocosm. And here we are having our human body, human body is functioning. This is microcosm, right? Mike, the little one and the larger one. And literally we are the same thing, right? We are the same thing, even in a scientific view. You know, in a, even in a scientific view, so what is the ingredient of our human body, right? Our human body is the oxygen, it's the carbon, it's the nitrogen, and these four, uh, four elements, four elements, chemical elements. What is the basic ingredient of the entire universe? It's the same thing, right? Oxygen and nitrogen and oxygen and carbon, there are four ingredients. So then how it's functioning is there and the universe is functioning in a large scale and here is happening in a small scale. But what we have here, actually, it, it is what is really contains in the outer space and the universe, exactly the same. This is exactly what Kala Chakra means. Why it's called the outer Kala Chakra is exactly the same as inner Kala Chakra, right? So this, you know, one of my uh, favorite, one of my favorite uh, um, um, Rumi's uh, uh, poetic expression, Rumi says, you are not one drop, you know, one drop of water in the ocean. And he says, you are entire ocean, one drop. That's exactly Kala Chakra expression. I'm sure Rumi studied the Kala Chakra or he had the Kala Chakra uh, how do you say, <laughs> experiences, because he was a Sufi master, you know, Sufi master, they have this special dance. And I, I know in the Kala Chakra Tantra also, they have a very specific dance. This I don't want to talk about. So maybe Rinpoche one day will reveal this the dance, Kala Chakra dance. But, uh, anyway, so exactly. So outer space, there is an infinite space, right? And here we have an infinite space too, but this infinite space, the infinite universe is under in a human skin. And each of us, it's representing that infinite the space. And therefore outer Kala Chakra and inner Kala Chakra is the interaction between macrocosm and microcosm, right? Interaction. And then everything is calculated. Everything is calculation because of its energy. Energy, Energy is not just the freestyle of energy, it goes everywhere, right? Energy, our heart is very much rhythmic and very, very much calculated, right? Our heart is beating more or less 70 to 80 times per minute and 100,000 times every 24 hours. It's a, it's a very calculated, right? Our breath is 10 or 15 times per minute. It's a calculated, right? So it, it's all our, you know, our heart is uh, beating automatically, our lungs are breathing automatically. And uh, once, once we open our eyes, we see, you know, we effortlessly, 
And if there are any sounds around us, you know, we hear, perceive it immediately, right? And we are like, uh, how do you say? And that is called interaction. That is called interaction. So there is a physical interaction that we can see, we can feel. And that's why earlier I mentioned about um, the environment, you know, the impact of environment and our health is so important, right? The, the air pollution is influencing us so much. If the air pollution is influencing us so much, do you see the air pollution? Most of the case, we don't see it, right? But is it really in a subtle level affecting us? Yes, of course. And the air pollution, one dust can carry six to seven, uh, six to seven types of very heavy chemicals, one little dust. But if we inhale this, it enters in our system in a subtle way. It's affecting us, right? So the similar way, this uh, even extreme subtle level, all the plan, all different kind of planets, and they are affecting our body. And so that is the outer, uh, this chigatinkur, uh, outer kala chakra and inner kala chakra, right? So you know, also this uh, uh, the great uh, South African uh, artist, I think William uh, Torenberg or something. So he said, uh, "Man, you know, a man is a walking clock." I, I love that his ex expression. Man, we are all like a walking clock. We are we are the watch, right? We are the watch. You know, every every time, every minute is like making clicks, like tick 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 tick. And, uh, and we are walking a clock and the universe is a walking clock or the solar system is a walking clock. And in this case, we put two clocks, two chakras together and they have to match. If we are in a harmony, we are in a good health. If we are not in a harmony, then, then we get to, then we lose the, our balance, right? So once we are in balance, it's called wellness. Once we lose that balance, it's called illness. Right, and then the third part of the kala chakra, the other kala chakra, or the the ultimate kala chakra, is referred to our human consciousness. And then that case, and then we need to learn about the mind and body connection. Right? Is the mind and body is completely separated, or they are completely unified? There is no separation. But many texts. When we study, it seems there is a separation. We can study in a different way, this and that. According to Kala Chakra, there is no separation. Mind is the body and the body is the mind. So that's why there is no Yerma Chepa means there is Lusum Yerma Chepa. There is no separation. If there is no separation, what is the, how they are completely unseparatably connected together? That's through Prana energy, Lung, Prana energy. And then we talk about lung energy in Tibetan medicine, in Indian yoga tradition, they talk much about the prana energy and this and that. But the Kala Chakra, we can find the most uh, detailed and the best explanations about prana, right? How do you know the pranayama? For example, pranayama is a part of Kala Chakra too. And then it's very, very well explained about uh, how the different pranas are functioning. So for example, earlier I mentioned about the stress. According to Tibetan medicine, or also according to Kala Chakra Tantra, stress is it's a reaction of our energy and that energy is called the prana. And so if we know how to work with the prana and we can reverse the stress, or the stress is can be prevented through dealing, you know, both physical and mental stress can be prevented through dealing with our prana or with our energy. And but then, you know, it's it's easy to say to work with uh, with prana, but then how many kinds of prana we have, right? Five basic five root pranas and five branch pranas and five element pranas and so on. So this part also, even, you know, when we studied the Tibetan medicine in Tibetan medicine text, we can find only five, five uh, values or five lungs. We call it uh, five root lungs, but then the branch ones and element ones, we don't find them. 
And then we have to study Kala Chakra Tantra. And Kala Chakra Tantra gives much more detailed and profound explanations. And that really helped us to understand better about uh, human health, you know. And uh, how do you say? To, to understand what is the what is the meaning of the complete, the balance of good health and why we get sick and what are the external forces are connected, right? Of course, in Tibetan medicine, we say our mental, three mental poisons, you know, ignorance, anger, attachment, those are the original cause of disease. And then the um, four external causes, bad diet, bad lifestyle, and the invisible forces. And then last one is called the time. Actually, in Tibetan counting is do dun se chu. Do is the first one. Time is the first one, you know. Do means time, right? Do kor means kala chakra. You know, the time, the spinning time is, you know, do kor, spinning or the wheel of the time, do kor, that's kala chakra. But when we just say do is the time, right? That's kala. Do is the time. So if we know how to deal with the time, we can stay healthy, right? If we know how to deal with time, we can prevent many chronic diseases. But we don't know how to deal with time, then we get sick. And then the time is becoming a problem, right? So actually, you know, we are talking about our relationship with time. So time, if you are friend with time, you are healthy. If time is becoming your enemy, then you get sick, right? So that's why the time can become a healer and the time can become a cause of the problems. And because of this, when we talked about uh, the inner Kala Chakra, actually also because of the planetary um, combinations, you know, planetary combinations, uh, we call it this uh, eight uh, planets, okay? Of course, we talk about 27 or 28 planets, but there is a one very specific uh, theory, which is coming from Kala Chakra, eight planets and connection with eight Nagas, Zajet Lujel, eight Nagas. So again, it's like another two kinds of time they need to match each other. Once they match together, and then in our earth, all medicine, medicinal plant and everything is becoming nectar, you know, Dutsi, the nectar. But once this, uh, this, uh, the, the rotation of the Naga and the planets, they are not matching, not matching. And then even the medicine can become a poison, right? So actually this is interesting, you know, this is a very important tantric view. It says the medicine is the poison, poison is the medicine, right? If you know how to use a poison, it's a medicine. If you don't know how to use a medicine, it's a poison, right? This is about our knowledge. But also because of the combination of the planets and elements and so on, and on a, on a wrong time and a bad time, and so everything can become a poison, but in a good time, when everything is matching, uh, you know, the, the, the planets and energy, everything, and everything becoming a nectar. So that's why also in Tibetan medicine, we use lots of uh, uh, herbs and plants and minerals and many things. But mostly when we collect them or we make, you know, compounding, putting them together to make a medicine, we have to check the time, you know, very specific times and this and that. So we use lots of Kala Chakra informations there too. And that's why normally, I think many of you, you know, the Tibetan medicine, the institution or the hospital of Tibetan medicine in Lhasa and also in Dharamsala is called the Menzi Kang. Okay, Lhasa Menzi Kang or Dharamsala Menzi Kang. So Menzi Kang, there are three words. Men means the medicine. Si means astrology, Kang means the house, house of medicine and astrology, right? So that means if we really need to become a good Tibetan medicine doctor or Soharikpa doctor, we need to learn about astrology too. And especially I would say the astrological study from the astrological study 
from Kala Chakra system is very, very, very important, right? And in the, you know, in the old time we say, in the old time we say a good, uh, a excellent, a excellent uh, doctor, it's a good astrologer too. The same way a uh, excellent astrologer, it's a good uh, doctor too, right? And even in ancient the Greek tradition, maybe many people, they don't know this, even in ancient uh, Greek medicine, actually for them was very important, the combination or the, the union of medicine and astrology study together, right? So day and the night, the plants, the nature is functioning differently. And the day and the night, our human body is functioning differently too. So today we know like what kind of vitamins or what kind of proteins and hormones are functioning, you know, differently in the day and the night and this and that, right? Melatonin is uh, released in the night that helps us sleep. And then in the daytime, if we get more sunlight, we get vitamin D and the, the things, you know, these are the basic things, what we, what we know today with scientific studies. But ancient time, nobody knew these things, right? But Kala Chakra actually gives us all this kind of uh, information, very scientific and very logic information, how, how it's important to live according to the, 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 the cycle of the nature, right? Cycle of the nature, the lunar cycle or the solar cycle. And that is, that is the, the base of the, the balance, right? And uh, yeah, then the, the secret part of secret or the ultimate part of the Kala Chakra part is, as I said, that's about human consciousness, you know, the, then human consciousness, then we are talking about uh, all human um, negative or disturbing emotions. Again, human negative and disturbing emotions, and uh, you know, they are, they are like the poison and the medicine. When we don't know how to deal with a disturbing emotion, it's a poison, right? Like anger, let, let, let talk about anger. This part, I don't need to say much, you know, Kamtri Rinpoche is the expert. <laughs> Kamtri Rinpoche is the expert. I don't need to say much, but because we are talking about the medicine, I think it's, it's good even, you know, the, our emotions are very important for our uh, health, right? Yes. So, for example, when we talk about anger, and so many people, they are having these uh, anger issues, right? Anger issues. And many people, they don't know how to manage their anger. Uh, actually, anger, it's a stress reaction, right? Anger is a stress reaction. So in the Kala Chakra Tantra, anger, it's the manifestation of the fire element, right? The fire element. But once this fire element, if it's a blowed by the wind element, then it enhances like a wild bush fire. You know, mm -hmm. there is a bush fire and then there is a very strong wind. Everything makes worse, right? Everything makes worse. And then like we kind of feel like this kind of anger and the stress is kind of unstoppable, right? Unstoppable. And then as a reaction, what we do, or we hit somebody else, or we hit ourselves, or we just go out and, you know, take some substances, alcohol or drugs or, or, or smoke, cannabis, whatever. You try to, to find a solution for that, right? That moment, we are super stressed and the fire and wind combination is intensified and we don't know what to do. And if we do this, repeat it again and again, it's actually, it's like a poison. It's the same like we are drinking poison, you know, again and again, right? So if we drink the poison every day, you know, little bit, little bit, little bit every day, in a few months, in a few years, then finally we see the result, the effect, right? effect and as a effect is what is happening and then we lose our heart heart health right we we start to have cardiovascular disease circulatory issues 
and our immune system is down and uh, yeah and and uh, psychologically so maybe we are how do you say we are all constant in the anxiety too right you know you when you get angry you shout and you 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 react to your anger but maybe that anger is harming somebody else too so that's when later you are feeling bad about that right so that's why actually really getting anger it's like a poison so that's that's the case when you don't know how to handle the anger when you don't know how to use the poison it is a poison but if you are able if you know how to use it it is a medicine so the anger actually if you are able to see the nature of the anger if you see it is a element it is a energy right and you try to embrace that energy you train it and study and practice it and slowly slowly you are able to once this is coming you say okay the fire my volcano is bursting now the bush fire is starting now you know be mindful of it and then you are able to embrace it and then you are able to release it and then you do it again and again so then it's like energy is recycled and energy is used in a positive way and so that can reduce blood pressure that can reduce heart issues right that can enhance our immune system so in this case you see our emotion it is the, you know our emotion when you don't know how to manage it is a problem but when you know how to manage it's a medicine okay okay sorry i talked to too much <laughs> yes rimboche okay so uh, yes dr nida says uh, very nicely and you know the english terms everything even i want to say something something not enough my vocabularies and grammar so that's very good thank you so much and then yeah the mm, uh, the, the i think the the kala chakra mm, tells that how to uh, uh, our, our emotions uh, we don't need abandon anything we can use all of them and nothing no need abandoning and so uh, we don't need a uh, void uh, anything uh, those things uh, i have a book coming soon <laughs> uh, written already tibetan but it's not uh, mm, translated or almost finished so that, that so to, today we're not going to talk uh, i don't talk too much and so better to uh, leave everybody have question chance so you can question uh, dr nida uh, or if you have some question to me you feel free to whatever question the kalachara um, uh, the medicine and the uh, and any topic of the kalachara uh, you welcome to um, question me and and of course uh, in more practical things um, the medicine uh, of course uh, the doctor nida maybe knows 100 times more than me so uh, so i i i i, I never studied uh, um, uh, medicine but uh, my lama never studied medicine he just practiced kala chakra and he become experts you know that's what i want to say i'm not saying i'm like that but i this is my inspiration you know so that's why uh, even i don't know the medicines names <laughs> and many things but uh, yeah so uh, some parts i have answered so you can um, question uh, i think everybody questions better because then everybody has a chance to participate yes. uh, i just want to finish one thing and so uh, what i was explaining is um, like our you know our body let's say we are in the middle finger and one is the environment or external space and one is the mind so in a way you know they are interdependent and interconnected so that was i was saying in the kala chakra view is uh, it's very accurate about health right so we need to mostly we say yes we... yes yes this is this is i want to say the uh, external kala chakra internal kala chakra and then the the other kala chakra which one is the most the ultimate or the uh, pramadior is ultimate and then is 
internal and external is the internal internal if we have internal uh, controlling or if we have internal uh, how to say power uh, how to use our full potential then is uh, external is secondary but usually we think is external is, is affects us you know and it looks like this but then in 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 a, in, a, in the depth level the internal is much more stronger than that's why dr nida before saying you know the the mind that there are no more medicine don't understand and no more the science medicine don't understand these things so yeah so that's an indication so then other color chakra so the enlightened color chakra mandala is where we, why we talk about we, finally we don't need abandon anything everything we have uh, is a uh, perfect so that's uh, the related with the color chakra mandala you know so that's incredible detail. So we don't talk about today. So okay, let uh, that I want to mention just uh, uh, the importance that uh, that's all uh, Dr. Nira didn't say. So that's I want to say it only. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Kendra Mache, Dr. Nida. Uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, please add them to the Q and A section. You can question as well, Tanya, because you you know astrologist. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I actually have a, a really practical question to start with for Dr. Nita. Um, uh, when you, um, so, you know, the, um, the our inner and outer universe is very complex on many levels, um, but interested to know what your process is for understanding a patient's wellness as a, just an overview. Uh, sorry, can you repeat your question? Yeah, so the, our inner and outer universe is very complex on many different levels. Um, ha, I'm interested to know what the process is for understanding a person's wellness. So if somebody yeah. comes to you, what's the, what's the kind of practical process? Yeah, when somebody comes to me, uh, what, in a simple way, what I want to say is, our body is the meeting point of the inner universe and outer universe. Inner universe is the mind. It can be very complicated, this and that. So when somebody comes to me, <laughs> when somebody comes to me, firstly, I ask them what's, what's, what's happening going on with them. And then next the question is, is what are the causes so the causes can be the diet and uh, you know wrong diet and lifestyle and this and that and then to try to understand what is the original cause of that right mm. so that can be the the planetary influences like in our study you know in planetary influences or or maybe the diet and lifestyle so mm. then i make the diagnosis and then the when then I suggest uh, four or five types of solutions. If it's something related to diet, uh, diet you have to change your diet. If something related to lifestyle, you have to change your lifestyle. If the person needs some physical support, herbal medicines, they can take medicines. But if they need uh, um, external therapies, you know, Tibetan medicine, we do lots of external therapies like. Uh, massage and herbal baths and many of these things acupuncture and so on mm. but this one also we need to consult the astrological uh, um, calculation so then if it's uh, connected with the astrological things we have also the spiritual solutions mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so every every single cases you know every every patient every single cases it, it can be very complex, right? Not only the universe is complex, our human head is very complex, our human body is very complex. So therefore we try to understand what is the cause of the disease and what are the symptoms and what are the solutions. So according to the, the symptoms and the cause, you know, mm -hmm. we cannot say we deal only with the causes, not dealing with symptoms, right? We cannot ignore the symptoms because patient normally come to you because of the symptoms but then just the dealing with symptoms is not enough if the cause is clear and we try to work with cause too thank you 
another question uh, about belief. So if, uh, if there is uh, Tibetan medicine in the form of pills that you can take for someone who is very angry or uh, is a danger, um, if they do not believe in Tibetan medicine or color chakra, similarly, if somebody doesn't believe in astrological remedies, um, yeah, what, course, what is the uh, result? Of course, there are pills. I said the anger in the elements, and in, in the elements, anger is the reaction of the fire elements. So normally, angry people, they are also more prone to have inflammations, right? So we have this anti-inflammatic anti pills, or we call it uh, uh, silmen, the cooling medicines. <laughs> Volcano is hot, anger is hot, we have cooling medicines. Silvi men means cooling medicines. Mm -hmm. So that you don't need to believe in Kala Chakra, you don't need to believe in astrology, right? Inflammation is the inflammation. But maybe the inflammation is not manifested in the physical level, but in energy, energetic level, yes, it's a high and there is. Mm. And then also some very angry people, they are angry not because of the fire, because of the wind, you know. Mm. Like, for example, uh, some people, the very short-tempered people, and maybe they suffered a lot from their childhood or they, they are really facing difficulties in their life. So in this case, is not the fire is burning, the wind is blowing the fire. And then so we call lung men, you know, lung men is medicine for the lung coming down the wind. And again, so there are many different uh, kind of uh, pills for that. So for if an angry person come to me, I would ask, what are the reasons this person is angry, right? Then I check the pulse and then I see if the fire is higher or wind is higher. According to that, I can give the pills. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you um okay no Sorry, more questions there's quite a f there's quite a few questions i'm just um okay. filtering my way through um okay um can either one of you please explain perhaps the 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 explanation of kundalini or the rise of kundalini or tumo somebody's asked that question oh so i think uh, uh Kundalina uh, Tummo is, uh, I think, very important to understand. Uh, Tummo is just not, uh, just not heat, just, uh, just not for heat, because usually and um, people always Tummo is makes heat. You can go in the cold places. You don't cold. They think like this way, but that is a uh, uh, is the not the the ultimate uh, effect. That is just a secondary effect. Uh, the ultimate effect doesn't mean is a fire. It is means uh, um, uh, activities, uh, activities your subtle, uh, subtle body, and uh, you know the. Um, so that's why it's important to know uh, that the more I think everybody have narrow view, and, and my point of view. So that's what I want to say. Then if the doctor wants uh, uh, add anything, you welcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kundalini, the um, Kundalini system, Kundali, actually in Tibetan Buddhism, we have this too, it's called uh, uh, Amrita Kundali, you know, in the Tibetan explanation. And Tibetan tradition, especially this part, refer to the Amrita Kundali, the deity, and also Yutoninti is considered this uh, Amrita Kundali tradition. And um, then the Sanskrit word for Dummo is called the Chandali. So they are very kind of similar, you know. Of course, like Rinpoche said, it's uh, activating your subtle body and inner heat. Because we think the nature of human body, it's a suffering. But if you really dive into the deep layer of our Vajra body, the, the nature of a human body is a bliss, not suffering, right? To in to to experience that, so we practice tummo uh, and kundalini is similar. But here, what I want to say is, we have to be careful. You know, you should not practice 
Kundalini or Tummo because you read a book, because you are watching a YouTube and you know, you at home, you try to try it by yourself. Don't try these things at home without a very qualified master who helps you, guides you and supports you. Because otherwise today it's a very common, you know, there is a syndrome is called the Kundalini syndrome. Okay, Kundalini syndrome means People, they try to do lots of energy work and then they have very strange symptoms, right? Uh, actually, there is a word for that. It's called um, spiritual, spir uh, mystical, mystical uh, delusional syndrome. So think that word carefully, mystical and delusional. Delusional because you think the energy is always moving and you are always moving, you can't stop it, right? Or, or you know, some people are always like this. Even just hearing the word of Kundalini, some people start to move like this. Uncontrolled, uncontrolled symptoms or uncontrolled disturbing energies are rising. It means something wrong. You have to be careful. Okay. So, um, Kolsa, in Tibetan, it's called the Kolsa. Kolsa means set effect. We have to be careful, Kolsa. You know, also in the Chinese Qigong tradition, they talk about this, right? Chinese Qigong tradition, it means uh, walking on the fire, entering demon inside. Actually, it seems you are possessed, you know, like a possession, right? And that's uh, like a delusional symptom. That's why we really have to be careful. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Thank you so I, I, I forgot I before to say, you know, the uh, uh, activating the subtle body means uh, uh, for, for beliefs, uh, in opposite the uh, sadness and depression, you know? So that's why... Uh, the tammo, I think the Dharma practitioners, they have to understand something bigger than fire. Okay, it's not just a uh, heat and uh, something uh, like consult, you know, the more you can, can, can the tantra and a consult, you can can think that. So like that way, it's not, uh, yeah. So the medicine point of view that uh, Dr. Nida said, that's really good, uh, you know, because I think many people have tantra and uh, something, they learn the technique, then they think, okay, they can practice Dantayana from the book and like this. Is Dantayana is not about a technique, you know, technique is always secondary. So is a, a secondary condition is if you don't have the primary condition of Dantayana, then you secondary doesn't work. And then many people disappointed and then they give up, you know, this things. So that's why the, the Dr. Nida that said, I was very happy to uh, everybody know this effect in dizzy, other disease, yeah, it's strange disease. And yeah, that's, I think, very important. Everybody hopefully watch, many people watch, yeah. Thank you. Uh, there's a few questions regarding the eight planets and the eight Nagas. Uh, are they connected to Naga days? Also, are there any resources that people could read? And, yeah, this, uh, uh, yes, eight, uh, this, um, it's called the Dutsi Tamjur, the, the, uh, Dutsi Tamjur is like the nectar's joint today, something like this. Yeah, there, you have to study the Tibetan astrology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's called the Kartsi, you know, in Tibetan astro. Actually, Tibetan astrology, I love Tibetan astrology. I'm not an expert because Tibetan astrology, there's a combination of, you know, the Chinese 12 uh, signs, right? Astrological signs. And then in the West, we have 12 zodiac signs, right? So when you study the 12 zodiac signs here in the West and the Chinese one, it seems completely disconnected. There is no connection at all. In Tibetan astrology, you put them all together. Hmm. Actually, I think Tibetans, you know, the, you know, many studies like Kalachakra coming from India to Tibet and then the 12 signs may be coming from China to Tibet. And I, I think Tibetan great masters in the past, they did a very good job. You know, they put them in a very nice way together in a very balanced way. So there is no contradiction, right? To understand together. So that's why this, if somebody wants to know this, you should study the Tibetan astrology. And this part is called the Kartsi. Kartsi means the study of the stars or planets. Mm. Okay, thank you. 
Um, someone is a scientist and a color chakra student practitioner, very interested in further integrating these two points of view. Um, is there a plan to offer more combined sessions or how do they study both separately? Okay, so well, the, how do they integrate themselves? How do they how do they integrate those two things themselves as well? Science and color chakra. Uh, you have to understand that uh, uh, science does help to uh, understand color chakra. Uh, and then uh, color chakra can help to understand the science sometimes, but not everything. Uh, so but you have to know that uh, uh, the color chakra is more ancient and the color chakra is, will be the ultimate. You know, the science has a limitation because uh, how you go, uh, the strategy is the focus externally. Uh, so the color chakra focus internally and more go deeper and uh, settle. So that's why. So. <laughs> Uh, I, I only know that and I, I don't know how to uh, uh, details uh, what point is important to talk this this point. So if mm -hmm. the doctor want to say something. Um, yeah, this is a huge uh, topic. <laughs> but, uh, uh, what only I want to say is if we really, I think uh, we need to do a little bit more uh, analytic studies, you know, on the Kala Chakra Tantra. And uh, maybe, how do you say, I, I know Kala Chakra Tantra is very uh, systematic, but yes. maybe we need to do a little bit more analysis according to the modern way to understand, you know, in a scientific way. But one thing I can say is what science is science is the study of causality, right? Science says nothing happens randomly. You always want to know why, you know, what are the causes and reasons. Causality, Ju Chin Tenjal, exactly the same thing, right? Ju Chin Tenjal is exactly the same thing. So that's why anything, if you discover in the scientifically or scientific way to understand about time and space, I don't think there are any contradictions with Kala Chakra Tantra. I just want to say that part. And one thing we need to know is, you know, for the modern science, the time and space, it's a very big uh, topic, right? Very, very big topic. <laughs> uh, uh, we are not scientists, but we know this. It's a very big topic. What time is, what space is, right? How time and space is working. Actually, Kala Chakra talks about this topic, you know, this is the reason Kala Chakra talks about the time, but why it's talking about space and the universe and planets and so on. That's a space too. So in a way, if you need to understand what time is, you need to understand also what space is. And then you understand the relationship between time and the space. And then the third, the last one, very important is, what is the relationship between human consciousness and the time and space? Maybe that part is a little bit difficult to scientific way to understand because then at end, tantric views all becoming, a, uh, how do you say, not philosophical, becoming a psychological too, you know, right? So at yeah. end, why we need to understand about the space and uh, time and everything and the final goal is how we can free human mind from time and space. If we don't understand time and space, time and space is a prison for us. If we realize the nature of time and space, we can free ourselves from this prison, right? So that's the final goal, yeah. Yes, the Kalajagra, that's why Kalajagra, the time and the veil, uh, everything included, so everything you have to connect it with the time and the veil. So those things, I think I have many YouTubes. If anybody didn't hear before, uh, you can go and uh, listen to those. And also I have many YouTubes that uh, Dan Triana, uh is uh, like posing, can be a medicine, like those things. So today, maybe I don't talk here, it's too much. Uh, we have short time. So other people have more chance to question. Thank you.
Okay, thank you. Um, I have a question about um, someone who has had past trauma. So uh, in that with if they've had trauma in the past of some incident, uh, how do they get back in touch with their inner nature and be able to heal from this trauma? Dr. Uh, Nida. <laughs> so, uh, I think like, uh, you know, let maybe this question is more about the PTSD, right? Post-trauma stress syndrome, PTSD. So normally this is the common word, PTSD. And uh, so this is a good question because so many people are living with traumas, okay? I want to say two explanations. One, yes, trauma is exist. PTS, it's a very serious issue, right? So then how to, how to deal with the trauma? One, we need to do psychologically or mentally. And uh, I'm sure if we do, you know, the visualizations and... Uh, and uh, with the mental meditations, many meditations can help, you know, to, to heal that, right? Trauma means a wound, and this is an invisible internal wound. It, the wound is inside, right? It's invisible. And so the meditation, and there are very specific meditation about the foreign measurable or loving kindness meditation. Those are very effective ones through meditation. Another one, and somatic healing. Somatic healing means, you know, maybe the traumatized people it's difficult to use their mind and then we use their body so how to use their body is there are different kind of therapies right body body movements or you know like a massage or therapy and in this case kala chakra we have a very specific this la circulation in the body la massage i think that is a good one as a somatic healing and uh, because uh, many of these uh, people with uh, traumatized people, you know, they have these uh, dissociative uh, symptoms. They are, they are disconnected with themselves. They don't feel and, you know, they don't feel themselves and, you know, physically, mentally, and also, uh, how do you say, it? empathy and love and compassion, these things. So that's why one, mentally can be rebuilt and two is uh, physically can be rebuilt built and the three is uh, through the relationship understanding and the bond you know with uh, friends or therapies or teachers or whatever those uh, three levels you know and then of course again once there is a trauma it's an invisible one so according to my understanding it's connected with subtle channels subtle channels i call it the block the subtle channels and when subtle channels are blocked then there is no energy flow right so there are some yoga exercises that can help that too. This is number one for answering for the trauma. But the number two, I call it the, the trauma business because today maybe we are talking a little bit too much about trauma. Okay. I'm, I'm not ig ignoring, you know, I know it is real and it is this, but I call it the trauma business because sometimes we focus too much about the trauma. So when we think about ourselves, what we remember is only trauma. <laughs> we are not just made of trauma. We are made of many other things too, right? <laughs> yes. If you see yourself in 100 pieces, maybe 99 pieces of you, 99 pieces of you is uh, you are built with good memories and many good things. But maybe one person is the trauma. But why you let this one person to take over 99% of yourself? So this is the reason, you know, I'm talking with many people and dealing with many people. And sometimes I really feel like trauma is becoming a business, right? You can just imagine you have a little wound or little, I don't know, pimple in your forehead, right? Well, each time you, you watch in the mirror, you see this pimple. So you remember this pimple all the time. And you even dream in your dream to see that pimple. What you do is you are always kind of touching the pimple and massaging and this and that. You don't like it. You want to remove it. You touch and touch. <laughs> pimple, pimple get uh, inflamed and it get worse. Do you understand? This is exactly the same a smaller minor traumas 
when you talk too much, when you do, want to do too much, it, it triggers, it enhances the problem. So that's why these things, again, we need to two different ways to think and to deal with, with trauma. If I tell you the truth, who is not traumatized? That's my answer. Because the world, the, our ancestors are traumatized because of World War I. And then secondly, they are traumatized World War II. And now we are all talking about the World War III. Who is not traumatized by the war? Who is not traumatized by politicians? Who is not traumatized by all this bad news? Who is not traumatized by so many bad things are happening in our life, right? So, you know, some people are saying, oh, you know, and uh, some Tibetan monks and the nuns and this and that. Yes, they are monks and the nuns. But, but if you think of how they escaped from Tibet, crossing the Himalaya, all these are traumatic experiences too, right? Okay, anyway, <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. why I think also we have to be careful with trauma business. Everything, I think trauma business, but also many things, the psych uh, psychology point of view is uh, who, those who don't understand the original causes of that three poisons and past lives, uh, these things don't understand, then blame everything in the childhood. This exaggeration, I think, makes sickness. That's I thought a long time. So Dr. Nida today confirmed, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Dr. Nida, could you explain perhaps more about the energy of Reiki healing? Uh, its origins are from Tibet. So I don't know if you... Yeah, yeah. Any... Reiki yeah. healing, actually healing with symbols and visualizations we have in the tantric systems. And especially in the Yuto tradition, we have the visualization of different elements and different Buddhas and these things. I think this 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 uh, concept is exist in Tibetan tradition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In med business all side. <laughs> yes, yes. And there is a, actually there is a um, text from this uh, Jikung tradition, Jikung Chupa, the founder of Jikung Kajur. So in his biography says uh, he had many health issues, you know, including hemorrhoid and so on. And then he was using medicines and different therapies. And one day he's, he thought, okay, I'm a spiritual master. Why I don't use uh, my visualizations for my healing? And he started to do it and he healed himself. And then he wrote a little actually text, you know, how to use different symbols, like you visualizing the lotus flower or jewels and how to heal himself. So that's why... I don't know that this Reiki, what we are practicing today, it's, it's directly coming from Tibet or not, but definitely in Tibetan tradition exists very similar kind of, uh, how do you say, this energy healing system, yeah. Okay, thank you. Rinpoche, did I you want to add anything? I want to say, in the past, I used to say Reiki is not from Tibet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but because I have a different view, because there are many similar therapies. It might be, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we, the name we don't have exactly, but for instance, the meditation singing bowl, uh, they are called Tibet. You know, many times at Tibet, we never see in Tibet things uh, uh, in, the, in the West called Tibet. So, Dr. Nida, do you know that the singing bowl is uh, originated from Tibet? <laughs> I think that's maybe coming from Japan and Japan and Chinese tradition they use the, this bowl no? yeah because I never seen in Tibet and I ask many many Tibetans they never seen so <laughs> so that's why I doubt you know <laughs> yeah okay you have any questions uh we have a few uh with some uh just some personal um uh, physical issues, but um, I'll try and stick to the ones that are more general. Um, uh, so just a general comment for both of you. The um, people are asking when when both of you are going to get together and do another talk again. Um, so people have found it very enjoyable. Um, okay. uh, yes, we, we could arrange, we could arrange. Definitely, we can talk more uh, Kala Chakra. Uh, mm -hmm and or something yeah we can come up yeah dr nida we can talk That's again right 
Maybe next time with <laughs> specific uh, topics. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe the doctor needs a uh, uh, host in me instead. I host in him. <laughs> so we can talk. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes, yes. So then. Uh, yeah, sorry, Rinpoche. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, a question for probably uh, both of you. Um, uh, from someone asking, how do they find a Tibetan master in Tumo? And how do they find a good experienced Tibetan doctor in a country like Paris or France? Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, in, the, in France, um, I, I think in France and Paris, I know there are a few Tibetan, Tibetan doctors. And uh, yeah. So Tummo, is Rinpoche teaching Tummo? No, I don't teach uh, just Tummo. You know, uh, Tummo is a uh, uh, part of Galachagra uh, system, uh, the high yoga levels. So uh, until now, we are very early of the uh, uh, yoga. So uh, we don't teach yet Tummo, uh, no. So Tummo, yeah, I think the people, uh, normal people just teaching Tummo very easily. Uh, what effect in I don't know. So uh, I haven't I haven't teach them the more seriously anything. You know sometimes uh, come across the text if you uh, have to explain some text they come in, in there. Of course I just do some explanation. That's all. But I didn't focus anything the more uh, teach like this yet. Okay, I oh, think. Um, oh, oh, you're. Yeah. I think we, we might leave it here, uh, Rinpoche and, and Dr. Nita. Um, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Nita, for joining yeah, us today. You. We yeah, appreciate it very me. much. Yeah. Uh, Rinpoche, did you want to end with anything? Oh, I just uh, want to thank you for Dr. Nita and thank you everybody uh, to pay attention, uh, to come and join. And uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, choose the time. The time is very precious. Uh, you guys choose to listen to this. Uh, I'm uh, very happy. I didn't uh, time too much talk uh, for me, but uh, uh, you, you can uh, surely you can listen to the, the YouTube or anything, anybody interested. But also we have a chance. We made karmic connection now today. So in the future, we have more chance. So thank you, everybody, and a happy new year. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Remains. Thank you, thank you everyone.